morning everybody my talk is about fusion imaging in ct or pci we doing ct for quite some time and i have nearly 15 years and we have found it very useful in uh, achieving reasonable success in ct or pci you know the ben all of us here are convinced about the benefits of ct or pci namely it improves your quality of life and general relief and also improves long term outcomes on the flip side we have because it's a complicated procedure requiring multiple hardware exchanges the complications rates are comp uh, higher than the usual conventional P pcis but the most important thing in predicting success is the experience of the operator all of us are not sensei mass masters so it's important that we have some of the ancillary aids in helping and planning Uh, procedures and achieving reasonable success this is a study which came out in the american journal of cardiology which compared two groups of patients one group had a previously failed pci another group had a first time pci attempt the success in both the groups were reasonably same but you found you found that the major adverse cardiac events were significantly higher in the previously failed pci group it is important that all of us in the first attempt should achieve a reasonable success rather than a failure now how does ct help in cto uh, success it actually cto ct actually helps you in planning a procedure very well it actually can predict the procedural success of your procedure better than the conventional angiogram and it also improves procedural success by what is called fusion imaging integrating ct data onto the fluoroscopic imaging and most importantly it's a one stop shop for anatomy perfusion and viability now how do i'll show you some examples how ct can help you in pre procedural planning this is an example if you this is a conventional angiogram you notice the total occlusion of the led there is no retrograde filling of the led from the uh, right coronary artery look at the ct image on the screen this is a complete occlusion of the led you can see a small speck of calcium here otherwise this is a, it's a relatively good area to puncture you can see a small nipple and this is where you should direct your wire so with this image itself you can plan your hardware your guiding catheter etc because there's hardly any calcium and you can also actually see the length i mean the measure the diameter of the vessel although it's a ghost image this is an example of how a cto should be selected when a physician ventures into cto in the first time this is an example of a short segment occlusion of the right coronary artery you can see there's no calcium at all and this is a very short segment occlusion when you see do a conventional angiogram you can find that the you can see hardly the vessel distally but you do a 3d reconstruction you can see the entire vessel in the entirety and a short segment occlusion here with no calcification so, so with this you can select your wire a hydrophilic wire you would easily cross this lesion this is, a, this is an example of a very tough cto you look at this there are multiple ctos 1 2 3 lot of calcium the important thing in ct you can have a cross sectional area of the calcium it's important that the the amount of calcium should be delineated all, all of us know that angiogram is a very poor way of delineating calcium but this ct can have a cross sectional area and this cross sectional area is more than 50% of the lumen so this is a very difficult ct you and you need to plan it very aggressively with uh, your toughest wires and uh, good guiding catheter to give you good support another example of an unfavorable ct you the angiogram on the left hand side you can see bridging collaterals uh, long segment occlusion you can hardly see the vessel distally see you can see the vessel distally you can uh, measure the diameter of the vessel and you see this is a small stump here and you can see a branch coming here so you have to plan your strategy accordingly based on your ct pictures this is another example of a short ct you look at this angiographic image here is a complete occlusion of the led you can hardly see the led filling from uh, collaterals from the circumflex but the ct image you can see is a very short segment occlusion you hardly see calcium here and you can actually see the diameter of the vessel distally you can plan your stenting strategy based on the ct image alone this is another example of a instant restenosis complete occlusion of the vessel and hardly any calcium so this is a favorable ct you for beginners This is another example of how a small CTO, a small vessel, you can actually miss on conventional angiogram. You can actually see the vessel a complete occlusion on the CT angiogram. 
Now, the, I told you about how pre-procedural we can plan. How does CT help you in pre predicting your procedural success? How is it different from conventional angiogram? Now, what all of us know, the predictors of unsuccessful re recanalization are previously failed attempt at CT or revascularization, longer the length of the age of the occlusion, the less the chance of opening, presence of market calcification. And now the most important thing is CTU helps you delineate calcium much better than the angiogram. So this is the most important, this is the best example of how CT scores over conventional angiogram. And the long occlusion length is an adverse predictor of uh, successful recanalization, blunt proximal stem, excessive vessel tortuosity, present site branch occlusion site, anti-grade bridging collaterals, and multiple CTOs. These are predictors of unsuccessful recanalization. As I mentioned before, the most important predictor of CTO success is the presence and extent of calcification, which helps you to delineate the guide wire passage and whether lesion can be predilated and the adequate stent expansion all depends upon the extent of calcification. This is an example of a complete occlusion of a circumflex on conventional angiogram. You can hardly see any calcium there. When you do a CT, you can see the chunks of calcification, which makes it very difficult for a, for a reasonable, for a soft wire or a intermediate wire to cross these lesions. Now, all of us know the JCTO score is used in, in the conventional angiogram for predicting the CTO success or the Y crossing with less than 30 minutes. But you can see this in the JCTO score is only the presence of calcium, which is a, which you can grade as absent or present. But in CT, you can actually see the extent of calcification is a determinant in a CT score. So this, this is where CT scores over conventional angiogram in predicting CTO success. There are different ways you can uh, score based on, I'm not going into details of all of that. Now this is a good paper which came out in the Jack Imaging in, in February this year. 250 uh, patients uh, were consecutively imaged with CT and then uh, taken up for in, uh, CTO recanalization. And they found that using the JCTO CT score, they could uh, predict success better than the conventional angiogram. This is an example how on a conventional angiogram you see there's a blunt stem, on the CT you see actually it's a tapered stem. In the conventional angiogram you see the angulation is 52 degrees, on the CT uh, angiogram is less than zero. In conventional angiogram you can see there's no calcification, you just marked absent in the JCTO score, whereas the JCTO CT score just marked a lot of calcium present. In this way you can, and the length of the occlusion, on the conventional angiogram here the length was 22 millimeters, whereas the CT it was only 10 millimeters. So, Based on the CT, we can actually predict the success. And this uh, paper showed that the JCTO CT score, which is seen in the red, it has a better predictability than the conventional JCTO score in predicting successful uh, procedure as well as 30 minute wire crossing. Now, uh, this is the topic which is of importance today is how you can co register your CT images onto your angiogram and see and how you, it can help you in actually doing your procedure. So if you are, all of you are planning to invest in a new angiographic uh, machine, all of you should prefer this uh, Siemens, this is called the Artis Q Zen or the Artis Q Fino, the, the latest offering from Siemens, which has the ability to co-register your angiographic images onto your conventional angiogram. In the process, you can, this is how it's co-registered. The, the machine automatically tracks your vessel outline from the CT images onto your angiographic uh, uh, monitor and this image is superimposed onto the angiographic image and thereby you can uh, select your uh, the angulation the, 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 which is required which has the less, least radiation and helps you in planning your procedure well. This green actually indicates that this, this is the orientation of the vessel. The red actually indicates whether there's a foreshortening. So it's superimposing these images onto your angiogram. You can actually, you can impose this image onto this and it helps you in actually guiding your wire based on the uh, angiographic, uh, on the CT images which are superimposed onto that. It's not a, a blind way where you track your wire when, at least for, when I asked the Japanese operator yesterday whether you require, whether, what does he think about fusion imaging, he says it's not required for him because he's a master. But all of us who are beginning to learn or beginning to practice uh, CTO, if, in, if, if you want to achieve reasonable success, having this kind of software where you can integrate the images onto your angiographic suit and help you in planning your procedure better. This is again another example of how you can integrate the images 
And all the, both the right coronary artery as well as the left images are integrated onto the suit and therefore you can, you can direct your wire and help you in achieving reasonable success. This is an example of an RCA CTO. You can see this complete occlusion of the RCA. This is a conventional angiogram here. The image is superimposed onto this and helps you in guiding your wire based on your uh, the angiogram CT images. This is another example of retrograde RCA CTO. The wire uh, went through a septal channel and actually placed in a safeness vein graft which is present here. It is going always into the vein graft. When you had this uh, angiographic images, CT images co-registered, you could direct it into the RCA as, it ha as you see in this example here. This is an example of uh, when you, uh, the wire was actually going into the PLOD branch and with this co-registration we could redirect it into the PDA branch based on the CT images. This is an example of an anti-grade dissection re-entry of an RCA CTO. You can see there's a lot of calcification here and all the, the stingray balloon and the wire was always going into the calcium here. We actually wanted to go, it, it to be, uh, go here, but based on the CT RCA uh, co-images, co we could redirect the uh, stingray balloon and the wire into the area of less calcium and achieve a success in these images. So I just want to conclude by saying that not only we can identify CTO, it helps you in uh, uh, telling you whether the, your actually CTO is going to improve patient's outcomes, it helps you in pre-procedural, uh, uh, it helps you in predicting the success of uh, PCI, also pre-procedural planning, also co-registering images you can achieve reasonable success and also long-term follow-up of stent patency. just want to conclude by saying...